Ms. Mariam Jaffa. Yes, sir. Um, I must first declare my interest as managing director and partner of a management consulting firm that does work in climate and sustainability. Um, in previous speeches, I have spoken about how climate change, one of the biggest risks facing the world today, can be one of the biggest opportunities for Singapore to lead. One of these big opportunities is green finance. How big? According to a Global Financial Markets Association, GFMA report, the development of which I must say my firm was involved, some 100 to 150 trillion US dollars in investments is needed over the next three decades to transition to a low carbon economy. This translates to at least three to five trillion dollars in investments per year, an increase of five to eight times from current levels. 66 trillion of these investments will be needed right here in Asia. Today, Singapore is already ASEAN's largest green finance market, constituting nearly half of green and sustainability-linked bond and loan issuances. There are ongoing initiatives and partnerships between the government and industry, such as the Green Finance Industry Task Force, to accelerate green finance in Singapore. And there is so much potential to do more. Green bonds and green loans are now established products. They need to be scaled up, and the known gaps and, and frictions need to be addressed, as many of my colleagues have discussed today. But to meet the needs of companies and investors in the regions and globally, as well as to push for more aggressive, more ambitious targets and, uh, and hence higher risk projects, a wider range of products and instruments are needed, including equity, structured products, derivatives, project finance and securities financing, in order to provide companies and investors different ways to get financing, invest, and manage risk or liquidity. A particularly interesting investment space is climate innovation. Venture capital and private equity investments in climate innovation have grown 14% a year since 2016 to reach $37 billion in 2020, with most funding going into mobility, renewables, and waste. But many more times is needed the GFMA report estimates that today the world is between 90 billion and 210 billion short of the yearly investments in new climate technologies needed to achieve net zero. There's a need to bring in high risk and patient capital to fund investments in early stage technologies, startups and emerging market firms. Now, the first generation of green champion companies, companies like NL Group, Next Era Energy, Orsted, they are generating shareholder returns at big tech levels. Think about the Facebooks and, and Amazons. And the second generation, including companies like Beyond Meat and Tesla, are generating returns twice this. So the rewards are great, but so are the risks. And the time frames for payback, long. Hence, the funding gap. So to unlock and catalyze private capital in transition finance and climate innovation, the government and the financial markets should promote the development of blended finance structures, combining public and private capital in collaboration with national or multi -develop multilateral development banks, foundations, and philanthropic organizations such as the Gates Foundation. This must be coupled with government investment in R&D, including basic research, infrastructure and standards, and smart money from venture capital and private equity. Innovation is critical in green finance. Innovation in terms of the financial products themselves, but also innovation across the green finance ecosystem. Just to cite a few examples, leveraging geospatial data for climate risk assessment, AI and natural language processing to facilitate reporting and disclosures, sophisticated scenario analysis and risk modeling, standardization of legal contract language, as well as tools and platforms for green financial literacy and risk awareness for corporate boards and executives down to the retail investors. These all represent opportunities for Singapore to boost economic growth and create high paying new jobs as we enhance the green finance ecosystem and build green finance capabilities. We have built a vibrant financial sector and grown new segments within the sector, most recently in fintech. 
we can do it again. But a key risk to the efficient scaling of the green finance globally is the absence of or too low carbon pricing and a lack of viable transition pathways for companies to begin. In Singapore, we know that the current $5 per tonne carbon tax is not enough to shift behaviour, but it has served to signal intent. If we are to achieve the objective of making it less expensive for companies to invest in decarbonizing and low carbon technologies than to continue emitting carbon, the carbon tax needs to go up, no question. The question is how we ratchet it up and covering what scope. Too fast and we risk disadvantaging our companies economically or passing on the cost to end customers. Too slow and we risk not achieving our climate KPIs or hurting the company's own long-term resilience and missing the opportunity to create business advantage and value. Now, each sector has a different emissions profile, transition readiness, industry structure, willingness of the end customer to pay. So I echo the views of the members like Mr. Liang Lin Hua and Ms. Fumi Ha that the increase in carbon tax must be faced. And I think with the highest emitting sectors first, the explicit forward direction on price levels and ample time for companies to 